of the surprise teams in all the football, the 4-1 Dallas Cowboys come to town to take on the defending Super Bowl champion Seahawks. Tony Romo's team lost the season opener to the 49ers. They've ripped off four straight wins. Dallas has won the toss, deferred to get the football in the second half. Percy Harvin waits as Dan Bailey spins it away, and we're underway. Harvin will bring it out five yards from the end zone. And he's up to the 20-yard line. Russell Wilson coming off a dynamic performance in the win over Washington a week ago. Threw for over 200 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Ran for 122 yards and a touchdown. Troy seems to get better every week. Boy, sure does, Tom. And you look back at that win on Monday night and... You know, a lot of penalties in that game, a lot of penalties against this offensive line, but without Russell Wilson and the plays he made with his feet, I'm not sure they would have gotten out of there with a win. First down carry for Marshawn Lynch. And once more, the Seattle Seahawks, Troy, uh, the ingredients are pretty simple. Don't give it away and come after him with a power running game. Well, they run the football better than anybody in the game, and a big reason for that is because of what they are able to do with Russell Wilson. But Marshawn Lynch is a dynamic football player, very physical, and that's what they want to establish when they come in and play these games. Well, you got to look at Steven Schilling as they hand it off to Harvin, and he is smothered behind the line of scrimmage. And the first one there to meet him is Justin Durant. For more on Stephen Schilling, let's check in with the third member of our team, Carissa Thompson. That's right, the local kid, Tom, from Bellevue High School, making his first start under center in place of the injured Max Unger. Now, Schilling saw three snaps in that Monday night football game. One of them sort of whizzed out of his hands, Russell Wilson making the joke. Ooh, that came out fast. Not concerned about the converted guard, though. Very athletic. Said the big thing for him will just be calming his nerves in the early goings, guys. All right, Krista, thank you very much. A third down and six on this opening possession. And Wilson delivers a strike. Very close to a first down. Second career reception for Cooper Helfit. He's a backup tight end. Of course, they are missing their regular starter, Zach Miller. Yeah, Cooper Helfit, he's just with his second catch of the season, had his first on Monday night, which was a nice play for him. But... It was a big third down conversion to start this drive. This is a, an area of this offense where they have they have struggled through the early part of this season. Got to look at Pete Carroll, no, 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 just no, no, turned 63 no, no. years old. It is fifth year here in Seattle. What a job Carroll has done along with their general manager, John Schneider, to screen to Marshawn Lynch. She breaks the tackle, tripped up at the 33, maybe the 34. That'll be a gain of two. Are you surprised at how well this Dallas defense has played? You have to be, right? Well, I think everybody is. I, I think even themselves, I think they're a little surprised, Tom. Coming into the season, of course, a historically bad defense a year ago. But when you watch them play, they play with great effort. And that's the key to this defense. Rod Marinelli has them playing pretty sound defense, and they play with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. That's going to be the key in this game. Well, they're without Bruce Carter. For a second straight week, Wilson being chased, and he can run it. He fumbles the football, and out of bounds after he picked it back up. So the Seahawks will maintain possession. Let's see where they spot it. It looks like the 38, which will bring up a third down and a long three. Well, I tell you, the Cowboys, they like to play man coverage. But when you're playing a quarterback like this, if he's able to break contain, which Russell Wilson was able to do, there was nobody out in front of him and the Cowboys are fortunate that the ball got away from Wilson because he would have picked up a lot of yards. They actually spotted back at the 33 yard line. So it is a third down and nine. First one. Along the sideline, run out of bounds. Inside the 20. Down to the 14. A perfect throw by Wilson to Jermaine Curse. 
Well, Jermaine Kerr starts in the slot, and when you press both of those receivers, that's what you run into as a defense. They run the natural pick. Orlando Scandrick, it allows Kerr then to get open up the sideline with a lot of field to work and a perfectly thrown ball by Russell Wilson. Boy, and he took a lick from the former Chicago Bear pro bowler, Henry Melton, in his first season with Dallas. Into the hands of Harmon. And that's a nice tackle made by Scandrick. Harmon scored three touchdowns that, that never happened in the win over the Redskins. All three called back on penalties last Monday night. Yeah, that was a, that was a game that, that really could have been a much easier win had they not have had all the penalties. Percy Harvin had an outstanding game, but as you said, it all for naught because they got called back. But a guy who is healthy, only played in three games last year, one of which was the Super Bowl. He's a special talent. They give it to Harmon and read beautifully by Justin Durant. We asked Rod Marinelli, the Cowboy defensive coordinator, about this defense, and if there's anybody that's really stood out, he said Justin Durant is the best kept secret in the NFL. Yeah, he's real high on Justin Durant. Feels like he would be starting for a lot of teams, you know, in this league. In fact, the two guys that Rod Marinelli singled out was Justin Durant and then Tyrone Crawford, who's off to a good start. Nice play of the drive, third and eleven. Four man rush into the end zone and Barry Church bats it away. They had an eye on Doug Baldwin. And what a play that was by Church on what could have been a touchdown. A pretty tight fit in there, too, that Russell Wilson's trying to get this ball in, and he has the perfect throw, but Barry Church drives on the ball, makes a good play, and keeps it from being completed. That's an outstanding job finishing the play by Barry Church. 33-yard field goal try by Stephen Hauschka. Good snap. Good hold. And right down the middle. For an early 3-0 lead on this opening possession of the game by the Seahawks. And we are delighted to have you with us on America's Game of the Week. Alongside the former Cowboy legend. Hall of Famer Troy Aikman and Carissa Thompson. I'm Tom Brenneman. You know, you look at this game and all the ingredients for Seattle, pretty much the same as they were a year ago, running the ball. Wilson seems to get better every week in a great defense. But now we're going to look at the Cowboys on offense. Can they run the ball today? Well, I think that's going to be the key in this ball game. The Cowboys, as we know, they've run the ball very, very well through the first five games of the season behind that young, physical offensive line. Now, today, they're going up against the number one ranked rush defense in all of football so can they run the ball that's going to be interesting to watch but whether they can or they can't I think the key for them is to remain balanced this is a hard place to play and you don't want to get into a situation where all you're doing is dropping back and throwing the football they chew up nearly five minutes ten plays the house to 33 yarder Harris will take a knee, and that's where Tony Romo will bring the Cowboys out to the 20-yard line. Romo, for the second straight year, underwent back surgery during the offseason. The first game of the year, he threw three interceptions and a loss to the 49ers. They readjusted his practice schedule, where he's taking every Wednesday off. He's only thrown two interceptions in the last four games. Well, his play has been noticeably different since he started taking Wednesdays off. He's been moving better as much as anything, Tom. Think back to that game last Sunday against the Houston Texans and him avoiding J.J. Watt and throwing the touchdown. Weeks one and two, he couldn't have made that play. So they'll start trying to run it. Well, against the number one ranked rushing defense in the National Football League, DeMarco Murray. 
behind this very talented offensive front. Well, it's a big physical group. There's a lot of people, Tom, already around the league that are saying this is the best offensive line in all of football. I don't know that I'd go quite that far yet, but a very talented group, and they're only going to get better. Play fake to Murray. Great protection for Romo. And incomplete. He had an eye on Des Bryant. I mean, it's Seattle defense. You know, we talk about being number one against a run. They're real good, as you might know, in the secondary as well. I think you look at the yards that they've given up this year. Last year, number one in pass defense but teams just haven't stayed committed to trying to run the football against them this year blitz coming great protection and that is Beasley cuts it back to the inside and he has the first down so on a third and ten the Cowboys throw it short but good yards after the catch for the former SMU star. Now there's good protection inside. Tony Romo has a nice pocket, and he gets the ball to Cole Beasley. Man coverage, and the one thing that Seattle does a good job of is making tackles. Now Burley, he's getting his opportunity this year because Jeremy Lane has been injured, but he has played well. But he's unable to get to Cole Beasley and make a tackle. A big third down conversion. In the hands of DeMarco Murray. Broke a tackle and dives ahead. Not a bad pickup. A gain of nearly five. Murray set the Cowboys franchise record by going five straight games to begin a season of rushing for better than 100 yards. Career high 31 attempts in the win over Houston. The NFL record is six straight games held by the great Jim Brown to start a year. But they feel like they need to get some other people involved. And right now they have Lance Dunbar in the backfield for Murray. And he'll catch a pass. Short of a first down, it'll bring up another third down. Cowboys have been extraordinarily good converting on third down so far this year. To give you an idea, the league average is 42%. The Cowboys are over 55%. Well, that combined with their ability to run the football is what has really helped that defense out for them. I mean, the defense has given up a lot of yards per play, but the Cowboys have controlled time of possession and have allowed their defense to stay on the sidelines. Four-man rush. Romo's in trouble. Steps out of it. Incomplete. And Romo took a big hit, and he's not standing yet. Romo stepped away from pressure initially. Boy, and he took a shot. And that should have been a penalty. Well, it was Bobby Wagner who was initially in coverage, and, and I'm not sure if it should have been a penalty or not, Tom. He came in with a shoulder. The question is, you know, had the ball been released in enough time before Wagner got there and made the contact? The referee was right there on top of it and watching it. And... You know, it looked like maybe it's just getting the wind knocked out of him. Of course, you, you, you mentioned the back surgery, and, you know, you find out exactly what his status is. And the punt is blocked and picked up and run in for a touchdown by Mike Morgan. Baldwin, he's out there as 
as though he's going to be in coverage and he sneaks down and comes in off the edge. Nobody sees him for Dallas. He has a free run to block that punt. And it was easy from there for Morgan. Returns at 25 yards for a touchdown. Well, how about that? One of your starting wide receivers in on special teams. And blocks a punt, which leads to a touchdown. Well, I guarantee you, Tom, you watch the film during the week, and the Seahawks saw something that they thought they could take advantage of there on that punt. Here's the third down play to Tony Romo, Bobby Wagner coming in. I think it was a clean hit. But here comes the punt. Doug Baldwin, he slides down. They change the look up. He gets a direct path on Chris Jones to block that punt. Just an outstanding job of execution to start this game by the Seahawks. Pete Carroll may have just turned 63, but man, you go watch his team practice and you go watch him take the field a couple of hours before the game and he bounces around like a man in his early 30s. Well, we were at their facility on Friday and, and you know, I, I've been to a lot of practice facilities. I've talked to a lot of a lot of coaches, a lot of players as you have as well, Tom, and it, it's a different environment in Seattle. You know, with the energy that Pete Carroll brings to this organization and the players buy into his philosophy, and it's pretty unique. Morgan, the touchdown from 25 yards away. The last time the Seahawks blocked a punt, ironically, was against the Cowboys. That they returned for a touchdown was against the Cowboys when they were last here in 2012 and Jerron Johnson was the one who ran it in for the touchdown. Let's bring in Mike Pereira from our studios back in Los Angeles. Mike, did you think this was the correct non-call? Absolutely, and I agree with Troy. Here's the issue. He runs out of the pocket. He's not in a passing posture, so the two-step rule is off, and he didn't lead with the crown of his helmet. Shoulder to the midsection. Perfectly clean hit. We thank Mike Pereira. We'll be checking in with him throughout the afternoon. Just like that, 10-0. And DeMarco Murray for a gain of almost five on first down. One of the real differences in the Cowboys so far this year is not only their commitment to the run game, but staying committed to the run when they have fallen behind. Well, I agree. And, and one of the keys in addition to that is they've had a lot of success on first down when they have run the ball. This was another good example. Four yards for DeMarco Murray to start this drive. I'll give it to him again. Slip the tackle from Bennett. And it's up to the 27-yard line. It'll bring up third down and three for the Cowboys. Top two rushing teams in the NFL. And look at some of the numbers on the Dallas side. How about that? 33 rushes per game on average. Last year, they were the second fewest. And so a dramatic philosophical shift in what they're doing offensively. On a third and three, Dunbar, and he picks up the first down up to the 32-yard line. You know, it's tough to take Murray. You saw him go off the field. Murray is among the better pass catchers in this Dallas offense. But Jason Garrett told us, look, we can't run this guy in the ground. This is only the sixth week of the year. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting in itself. But <laughs> yeah. this year we're talking about, you know, overworking DeMarco Murray. But Lance Dunbar getting some opportunities in this game. He's had a hard time getting on the field in recent weeks. Now they have Joseph Randall in the backfield, and he has a big carry across the 40, all the way down inside. 
inside the 30 to the 28 yard line Randall only 11 rushing attempts so far this year Jerry Jones said this week we got to get him a few touches well Travis Frederick does an outstanding job of clearing out the hole and then Joseph Randall hits it it's his first carry of the game and he gets about three or four opportunities during the course of the ball game Tom and I like this young man when he's gotten his chances he has really played well and he hit that hole there beautifully not breakaway speed but he's a very solid football player the 38 yard run Murray back in there ran into his own man That'll be down close to the 25-yard line. You see the balance right now that Dallas has shown offensively, and the passes that they have had have been underneath to the sideline, the inside route, Cole Beasley, haven't challenged these outside corners yet for Seattle. And up top, you've got Bryant locked up with Richard Sherman. Wide open is Jason Witten. And it is first and goal for the Cowboys in the Seahawks' five-yard line. Well, that's a bust in coverage there. Jason Witten comes off the line. Nobody touches him. The linebackers are playing zone. Nobody is carrying him up the field. Puts the safety. Cam Chancellor in a real bind. You don't see guys running that open against this defense often. First and goal from the five. Murray, a little delay. Boy, he's a savvy back. There's power, there's speed, and then there's awareness. Just slight hesitation, positive yardage. Well, he's got it all, and now the real key for him is going to be, can he remain healthy? That's been what has hurt him going back to his days at the University of Oklahoma, but he is a physical runner that finishes these runs off, and he gets about as much as there is to get on every run. Cowboys bring in three tight ends. And they're going to throw. And nearly intercepted. Oh, goodness. Right in the midst of Byron Maxwell. Last week, Seattle dropped a couple of should have been interceptions. Well, they got Gavin Escobar. He split out wide. They like him as a big target down here in the red zone, but Byron Maxwell, if he catches this, Tom, it's 99 yards all the way back for a touchdown. And that's the one thing that this defense has not been able to do that they were able to last year is get the takeaways. The other missed opportunity. Might play the drive. Third and goal. And that is a touchdown, and this time they find Escobar in the back of the end zone. A very impressive drive by Tony Romo and the Cowboys after that block punt and a fall behind in a venue like this, 10-0. Yeah, the crowd had gotten it back into this ball game, and... You, know, you want to come out and try to establish something after the block punt the big run by Joseph Randall Excellent job here, and they turned Gavin Escobar loose on the back line Going after by Bailey is good Romo five out of eight 43 yards and a touchdown and here's a throw to Escobar, his first score of the year. Both feet clearly in bounds. Well, we've been hearing for a while about Gavin Escobar. He was last year's second round pick and was expected to, to really be a receiving threat for this team. And you talk to these coaches and they continually say, well, he's got Jason Witten playing ahead of him. But Jason Witten was here when they drafted him, you know, in the second round. And his development just hasn't come along, I think, as they had anticipated. But they do like him, as I said, as a target down in the red zone because of his size. You know, guy 6'6". Six, six. Now, that time, size didn't matter. Nobody was even around him. 
34 straight game with a touchdown pass for Tony Romo. And he has an NFL record 36 straight games on the road of throwing a touchdown pass. Now the Redskins would not kick it to Percy Harvin last week. This is his second time. He'll run one back today. And that's why the Redskins didn't kick it to him. Six yard return for the Virginia Beach, Virginia native Percy Harvin. Well, he's such a dynamic guy when the ball's in his hands, and you're right, Washington wouldn't give him an opportunity. I'm not sure Dallas will if they're kicking off again in this ball game because of the things that he's capable of doing. Think about last year's Super Bowl. I mean, in a game that was already somewhat out of hand at halftime, he blew it open to start that second half with a return for a touchdown in that game. Well, first down from the 42 and Wilson to throw it on first down looking around looking around he'll run it and they have gotten back to the line of scrimmage what a day there's a flag down on the play thrown on the other side of the field in the secondary Holding number 32 defense. Five yard penalty added on to the end of the run. Automatic first down. Well, here's the penalty on Orlando Scandrick. Against Jermaine Curse. Now, Russell Wilson was flushed out the opposite way. You don't generally see. The flag opposite of the direction of which the quarterback is working. I don't know that I like that call. Play fake to Lynch. Wilson in trouble. And he gets it away. Incomplete. Tyron Crawford so close to bringing down the ever elusive Russell Wilson. Well, that's not easy to do, but the Cowboys, they continue to pursue. It's hard for these guys to continue to try to chase a guy like Russell Wilson, but yet they, they do a great job. And then on the back end, knowing that you have a quarterback who's capable of extending plays, it puts a lot of pressure on those secondary players to stay plastered to the receivers. Lynch. Barry Church planned on delivering a hit, and he wound up taking a hit. <laughs> he, he, he did, but he got him to the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's tough duty right there, Marshawn Lynch. You know, we talk about DeMarco Murray and, and the way he's been able to run. Marshawn Lynch is, is, you know, they don't call him beast mode for nothing, but he's a much more elusive back than he gets credit for. I had a very odd look to it from the very beginning, and finally the penalty flag comes down on a third and seven. Bill Levy, our referee here today. I don't think the officials were in agreement as to whether a penalty should have been called. The side judge, he he waved it off. Although the defender was in the neutral zone, there's a false start, number 76 offense, for coming out of his stance late. Five-yard penalty, third down. Of course, Bill Levy here in Seattle, he admittedly kicked a couple of calls. Here you get another look. Well, there was a lot of movement, yet... The Cowboys who initially jumped into the neutral zone and then Russell Okun the left tackle once he moved he was the one who got called for the false start. We talk about Levy he admitted during that Super Bowl loss the Seahawks had 
to the Pittsburgh Steelers that he missed a couple of calls and big ones in that game. Wilson in trouble again. Boy, and the Dallas defense stops on third down. George Selby and Anthony Spencer there to meet Wilson. Well, Anthony Spencer, the outside linebacker, he comes, and he's going against the rookie, Justin Britt, and, you know, Dallas is able to get after the quarterback. You think back to last week, and Ryan Fitzpatrick, although they failed to record a sack, they hit him a lot in that ball game. I think they're doing a lot of good things up front, just applying some pressure to the quarterback. John Ryan and over in punt, and a fair catch signal for at the five-yard line by Dwayne Harris. Four and one Cowboys against the defending Super Bowl champions. A three-point game in the opening quarter. Some of the numbers from the opening quarter. And look at the rush yards for the Cowboys, 55 of them. Well, that's going to be important as we move through this game. Not, not only the yards, but just keeping the score where it is so that you can continue to be balanced in what you're doing. Now, you know, as I said earlier, Tony Romo has yet to try to challenge these outside receivers or these outside corners with Des Bryant. You know, Jerry Jones earlier in the week said, hey, we want to go after Richard Sherman with Des Bryant. We like that matchup, and I like it too. But Richard Sherman's going to win his battles. Des Bryant's going to win some of his. You've got to be real careful if you're Tony Romo when you're throwing the ball in his direction. Clutch a pullback in front of DeMarco Murray on a first down carry, and that'll be a gain of three. Big, big day on Fox and on FS1 tonight, game two of the National League Championship Series. Giants behind Madison Bumgarner shutting out the Cardinals last night. Lance Lynn on the mound. They'll be opposed by Jake Peavy. What a pickup he's turned out to be. And that'll be on Fox Sports 1 beginning at 7.30 Eastern time tonight. Joe Buck, Carol Reynolds, and Tom Verducci from St. Louis. Murray, good blocking in front of him, and that is power football to get a first down. Ronald Leary leading the way for Murray, the NFL's leading rusher. Well, Ronald Leary, he leads the way. He pulls from the left guard position, and then the rookie, Zach Martin, does a, an excellent job as well. But finishing that off, that's a nice job of coming off the goal line there with a couple runs and picking up a first down. It's a 21st run already this season of 10 or more yards for DeMarco Murray. They fake it to him, looking the long ball down the sideline and overthrow. Well, the Cowboys run essentially a two-man route. They're going to block it up, give Tony Romo some time in the pocket, one-on-one -on -one outside. Byron Maxwell on Des Bryant, but the Cowboys, they start running the ball and it just opens up the matchups to take advantage of off of the play action. So although they're not throwing the ball as much, they're able to force the ball down the field because of what they've been able to do with the running game. Joseph Randall. Well, close to the 25% play. They're still talking about it down in Dallas. A 37-yard reception in overtime. Jerry Jones called it one of the great plays in Cowboys history. Well, it was a big-time play. In order to set them up for the win last week against Houston, I think the thing that gets lost on that play is the fact that Tony Romo, was he had a guy barreling down on him, and he was able to get it out before he took a big-time hit. Third and four. And denied first down yardage is Randall. There is a penalty flag down on the field. Malcolm Smith, last year's Prior Super Bowl MVP. Number 41 defense. 
Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. There's a break. Well, once again, Byron Maxwell. I don't know about that. The way Des Bryant came off the ball, it looked like he was blocking more than trying to get off the, the ball to run a route. I think they missed a face mask on that play also, but I can see where Maxwell was just trying to work through Des Bryant to come out and make a play on the ball. Nowhere to go on first down for Murray. Cam Chancellor coming up to make the stop. Two-time Pro Bowl safety. They were wondering if uh, Chancellor was going to be able to play today. You may remember he had off-season hip surgery, and it's been bothering him again during this week of practice. Yeah, and he is the leader of that defense. You talk to any of those guys, especially the secondary players, Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, they'll tell you to a man, Cam Chancellor, when he doesn't, he doesn't speak a lot, but when he does, everybody pays attention. Delay to Murray. That'll be a gain of almost four. It'll bring up another third down. Well, there's offensive coordinator Scott Linehan, and it's been a little bit of an adjustment for him as far as calling these plays. He's always been a guy who's thrown the ball to set up the run. But he likes this young offensive line, and they've been able to be so effective with it that it's just been a change. Now they run the ball to set up the pass. Dallas three of four on third down so far. Blitz coming. Romo delivers and there's the first catch of the game for Des Bryant up to the 47 and a first down. Now they bring a linebacker inside and because of that then it voids a zone for Des Bryant to be able to work the middle of the field. They're trying to bring pressure right in the face of Romo, but you see he's able to slide up and how that then opened up for the conversion. We welcome many of you from around the country. Just joining us here in Seattle, where the 4-1 Dallas Cowboys, they lost their season opener to the 49ers. They've won four in a row. And early on, it was not pretty. Romo took a big hit. Seahawks blocked a punt. Doug Baldwin, it was run in by Mike Morgan. It was 10-0 midway through the first quarter. Then Dallas put together an impressive drive. Escobar, the touchdown reception on third and goal, and now Dallas on the move again, trailing 10-7. The Hall of Famer Troy Aikman and Carissa Thompson, Tom Brenneman, our entire crew from Seattle. And that is Joseph Randall, who ripped off a 38-yard run that was a big part of that Cowboy touchdown drive. I'm telling you, I'd, I'd have to give him a few more opportunities than he's had. DeMarco Murray is a special player, but as I said earlier, Randall, when he's had his chances, I like what he's able to do. He finishes runs. He's pretty elusive. Got a good start to this game, and this running game has as well. This is a heck of a drive right here to start on the five-yard line for the Cowboys. The 11th play of the drive, and they're staying on the ground. Not much room this time for Murray. Well, you look at this Cowboy offensive line, and Cowboy, uh, Troy touched on it earlier. He got a number one pick at center. He got a number one pick this year at right guard in Zach Martin. You've got the number one pick from 2011 out of left tackle in Tyron Smith. Stretch it out to the 30, and once more, that'll move the chains. Well, you talk about it, a 12-play drive, and that defensive front is starting to tire. So you get, you then, 
are able to throw the football and it affects the pass rush of what Seattle is able to do. I like what Dallas is doing on this drive. check in downstairs with Carissa Thompson guys Bobby Wagner is listed as questionable with a right foot injury they haven't taken him in for anything I'll continue to keep my eye on it Tom we came into this game Seattle not only had they not given up a hundred yard rusher they had not given up a 40 yard rusher here in this first quarter Joseph Randall and DeMarco Murray already each of them over 40 yards rushing yep. 44 for Murray, 52 on four carries for Randall. And they just keep going back to the well. Murray, who's had his issues fumbling the football, there's a flag down. Number 68 offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. That'll be the right tackle, Doug Free. Murray's put it on the ground four times this year, all of them coming in the opening quarter of the game. Yeah, that's one thing that he has to clean up. Last last week against Houston, as you see the penalty there on Doug Free, easy call. But last week, DeMarco Murray fumbles when they're going in to score. There's another drive. They're moving the football. Of course, the penalty hurts this team, but he's got to be able to protect the football better than he's been able to this year. Oh boy. Talked about Marshawn Lynch able to deliver a blow. Murray just did to Brock Coyle, the rookie who's in there replacing Bobby Wagner. Yeah, I think DeMarco Murray was uh, upset with himself for that ball getting away from him on the previous play. Wanted to take out a little aggression, but here we are at third down. And as Pete Carroll said, they have to win on this down. They haven't been that good, but this is a difference between giving up touchdowns and having to settle for field goals. Wagner on his way back to the locker room. And a penalty flag comes down. This will be offsides against Seattle, I believe. Neutral zone infraction of the 72 defense. Got past the tackle. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Well, we talked to Romo yesterday, and you have to do silent count when you're here in Seattle. But you can't just have one silent count because these guys are too smart defensively. They'll pick up on that. And they'll still get a jump on the ball. So they have a variety of silent count mechanisms as to how the ball is going to be snapped and when it's going to be snapped. And that time, just not paying attention to the ball when it's gone. So third and nine becomes third and four. Romo looking for Bryant. And it's broken up in the secondary by Byron Maxwell. And Maxwell just now getting to his knees well there on the slot Des Bryant he had a chance but because Romo got flushed to his right he was unable to plant his feet and really get enough on it but Des Bryant we saw the play he made last week he, these are routine plays for him but just unable to haul that in more importantly right now for Seattle Byron Maxwell on the ground and they were already a little thin at the position Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Ford. Beautiful things happen when you go further. Find Miller Lite back in its original look. It's Miller time. And by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Well, they continue to take a look at Byron Maxwell, injured after breaking up. A pass attempt to Des Bryant, and now Dan Bailey. He is Mr. Automatic. And with that successful field goal try, he has just become the most accurate kicker in the history of the NFL. More importantly, we're tied at 10.
10-10 game. Dan Bailey now 100 out of 110 since the Cowboys signed him back in 2011. He had hit 30 in a row until missing at the end of regulation last week and wound up winning it in overtime. And, man, you talk about a weapon. The Cowboys have one in Bailey. He's just tied the game at 10. Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut's Bacon and Cheese Stuffed Crust. Seahawks for the football, 5.15 to play until halftime. And the Cowboys defenders claiming there was movement along that offensive line, a line that was hung with seven penalties last Monday night in D.C. Number 63 offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Let's check in downstairs with Carissa Thompson. Yeah, not good news, you guys, on the Seattle sideline for Byron Maxwell, who was taken into the locker room with a right ankle injury. The trainers tried to have him stand up once he made his way over to the bench and put some weight on that right ankle. No luck. Sat down for a long time, looked very defeated. Uh, they took him in. We'll continue to watch that. And also, Bobby Wagner still in the locker room. Carissa, thank you very much. Russell Wilson will keep it and then throw it. To Justin Duran deliver a shot on Jermaine Curse. That's an outstanding job by Dallas defensively being able to handle that play. Justin Durant comes out and snuffs it out. But Russell Wilson looks like he's going to keep it. They have this play to where if you overcommit then to the run, he's able to dump it out to the receiver. Cowboys not fooled. It's a good job. Second down and ten. Wilson being chased by Crawford, and he will run it. Steps out of bounds for a gain of three. Let's check in for the first time today with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. Panthers and Bengals tied with two ticks left in overtime, but Cincinnati's Mike Nugent misses what would have been a game winner from 36 yards out. We have our first tie of the season, 37-37, Carolina and Cincinnati. Tom, Troy, and Carissa. Thank you very much. Mike Nugent, who grew up just north of Cincinnati, was already on the hot seat in his hometown. And even hotter water now after that miss. It's a third down. And Wilson again having to scramble away from trouble. And it looks like they're short on the catch of getting a first down on the completion of Brian Walters. This Cowboys defense is off to a good start today. You know, a lot of talk about whether or not Dallas would be able to run the ball offensively, but the bigger matchup was how they would hold up defensively against this Seattle offense and containing Russell Wilson and his ability to scramble. But the secondary has done a nice job in coverage. There hasn't been anywhere for Russell to throw the football, and then they've been able to apply some pressure on him. So offensively, Seattle has not been able to do anything. Puts a foot on it, end over end. Dwayne Harris from the 29-yard line. Puts it back to the inside, up to the 40-yard line. And there is a penalty flag about five yards in front of where he was tackled. During the kick, holding number 39 receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. 10-10, the Cowboys with the ball, looking for their first lead of this game. Seahawks and Cowboys tied at 10. So Marcus Burley, who works as their fifth defensive back, now replaces the injured Byron Maxwell, and we told you earlier, Bobby Wagner, Back in the Seahawks locker room. He's been replaced by a rookie, Brock Coyle. Let's see if those turn out to be significant injuries to Seattle. Murray, in a lot of traffic, is able to bust out of there and turn it into a positive two-yard game. Well, immediately following game two of the NLCS on Fox Sports Live, our Carissa Thompson right here in Seattle. 
she'll have an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the star of this game. Who will it be? Fox Sports Live tonight after the NLCS Game 2 on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Kind of expected the Cowboys to take a shot at Marcus Burley coming in aligned opposite of Des Bryant. Instead, they run the screen pet screenplay for not much of a game. Whitten nearly pulled it in with one hand. Step for step with him was Malcolm Smith. So it'll be a third down for the Cowboys. And Malcolm Smith, all these linebackers can really run. And so they've got size. Malcolm Smith, last year's MVP in the Super Bowl, he just never located the ball. Had he have been able to find the ball, he might have been able to, to make a play on it. But a lot of pressure right now on this defensive front to get to Romo and help this secondary now that they've been depleted with the absence of Byron Maxwell. Seahawks have Stephen Terrell on Jason Witten and a timeout is called by Dallas. Terrell was just signed off the practice squad before the game. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. Jason Garrett's Cowboys facing a third and eight. From their own 22-yard line. Across the middle and turning it into big yardage is Lance Dunbar up to the 43 yard line. Beautifully designed play there. And that'll take us to the two minute warning after the gain of 21. We invite you to follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Two minutes to play until halftime. A quarter completely dominated by the Dallas Cowboys. The Seahawks have run three plays. They do not have a first down in this quarter. stuffed to the line of scrimmage by Cliff Averill. The only Seahawks loss this year came in San Diego when the Chargers held the ball for 42 minutes in the game. Well, you mentioned that Seattle has failed to get a first down. You know, in this quarter, of course, they lose one possession with the blocked punt, but they've not done anything offensively and defensively. They've been unable to get off the field on third down. Looking for a win. Very good coverage again by Malcolm Smith. But it was good coverage, Tom, but it looked like this was a ball that Jason Witten had an opportunity to make a play on. Tight coverage. Malcolm Smith never again gets turned to play the ball. Jason Witten doesn't miss many of these. And then on this other side, Richard Sherman, he draws the assignment on this play of Des Bryant. They have yet to go after Richard Sherman, regardless of who he has been covering. They have not switched sides. He has stayed to his side. This time, Richard Sherman's on Terrence Williams. Lay it off to Dunbar out of the backfield. He got a block. And unbelievably, on a third down and 14, the Cowboys pick up the first down. They've come underneath now a number of times, and the Seattle Seahawks have not had anyone to try to help cover the underneath cover or the underneath receivers. They're so worried right now about getting underneath some of the deeper throws that those checkdowns to Lance Dunbar have been wide open. Talk about a quarter dominated in every way imaginable by the Cowboys, and those numbers certainly back up that statement. But amazingly, it's still a tie game. Brian beats Sherman, and Sherman somehow able to trip him up, and a penalty flag comes in.
They're probably going to call Richard Sherman at the end of this play. Richard Sherman knew he was beat. He was out of position. Number 25 of the defense. Ten-yard penalty. Excuse me. Half the distance to the goal. First down. I don't know if their feet got tangled up or not, but a, a great job of recovery after Bryant was able to make the reception of getting him, getting, getting him to the ground and saving a touchdown. saw Sherman starting to stumble he's going to the ground and they just assumed that he grabbed well, it's first down and goal from just inside the 10 they give it to Murray and maybe back to the line of scrimmage again Malcolm Smith who did not play a single snap on defense last week against Washington but he's in there after the injury to Wagner today and that's one of the luxuries that they have is They've had four good linebackers that can all contribute. So you lose Wagner and you're able to plug in then a guy like like Malcolm Smith and let him go. And then they've also got the rookie Coyle. Well, with all those guys, they're trying to figure out who's going to be on the field. With the snap imminent, half the distance to the goal, second down. That was Bruce Urban trying to get off the field. So this Seattle team has not looked good. You know, you don't. You don't see an offense come in and dominate the line of scrimmage and do the things that the Cowboys have done very often here in Seattle. I mean, sometimes you see it on the road. You talked about what San Diego was able to do, but not here in Seattle. But the Cowboys have dominated this first half of play, both offensively and defensively. My play clock down to five. The delay to Murray. And he's able to slither his way down to the two-yard line, which brings up third and goal. And the Cowboys will spend a timeout. Jason Garrett's team has not led. They're trying to change that. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Cowboys with a third and goal. Just inside the three. Timeout Seattle. Their first charge timeout. Coming up, the Visa Halftime Report. Let's check in with what's coming up with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, Aaron Rodgers leads the pack to a last-second comeback. We've got an overtime thriller in Cincinnati. The Browns make a statement against the Steelers. We'll make sure you get caught up on a busy Sunday at the half. Pete Carroll wanted to see exactly what Dallas had in mind. They had three tight ends in the game, and when they broke the huddle and went into their alignment, Pete Carroll then called a timeout to figure out how they want to play this defensively. Well, once more, the Cowboys have Escobar in the game, along with Whitten. And they find Witten for a touchdown, his first this season. And the first time today the Cowboys have the lead. Well, initially, when Jason Witten comes off the ball, the Seahawks are all over him, but no inside pressure on Tony Romo. So he's able to take his time, and that's asking a lot. To try to stay in coverage, Witten able to get free, and Romo gets him the ball for the touchdown. But here's it as he gets off the ball. Romo looked to him initially, there's nowhere to go. Witten frees himself up, but just no pressure on Romo, and he's going to pick it apart. And that was a rookie, Brock Coyle, we brought up earlier, replacing Bobby Wagner, who was in coverage there on Witten. Romo had all day to throw it and delivers the goods. And for the first time this year, Witten is in the end zone. Plays 80 yards, 
And they finally find Witten. Who had gone five games into this season, the longest stretch of his career without scoring a touchdown, and that was career reception number 900. Only the great Tony Gonzalez with more. Of course, Tony Romo said earlier in the week, you know, uh, Witten might go down as the greatest cowboy of them all. And, you know, there's been a lot of debate about that, but well, yes, but his point was well taken. And Jason Witten is a great football player. Yes. Well, I must ask you, Troy Aikman who certainly has to qualify as one of the greatest Cowboys of them all as well. You and I wondered, and we talked a lot about this yesterday and before the game today, could Dallas at 4-1 and one come in here and make a statement? There is no question they have made one at least through the first half of the game. Well, they've played exceptionally well. They've dominated the line of scrimmage really on both sides of the ball. And you got to ask yourself, because I really have not seen Seattle play the way that they are playing here at home. You know, not a lot of energy. They stayed after the Monday night game in Washington. They stayed the night, tried to get rested, flew back on Saturday, or flew back on Tuesday. You know, whether or not that's had an impact on this game or not, but it just does not look like the same team. Well, they try to set up the screen to Percy Harvin. And then uh, not fool the Dallas Cowboys. And again, the Seahawks are 10 seconds away from having played this entire second quarter without a single first down. This opening half. Things getting a little testy down there. Pushing and shoving. That's the way the first half will come to an end. Dallas will get the ball to begin the second half. You may remember they won the toss. And the Cowboys have a 10 point lead at halftime. Let's send it back to Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. It's time for the Visa halftime right now. Game of the week, the Dallas Cowboys on the road in front 17 to 10. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. We talked so much about the run game, but that certainly has aided Tony Romo in the passing game. No, they've been very efficient. You know, they've run the ball well when they have thrown it. Romo's completed some big passes. Tremendous balance offensively from what we saw there in the first half for Dallas. 234 yards of offense for the Cowboys, only 81 yards of offense for Seattle. And many of you who joined us late, bear in mind, the only Seahawks touchdown in this game came on a blocked punt by Doug Baldwin, which was then picked up by Mike Morgan, who ran it 25 yards into the end zone. I think Seattle's got to feel pretty fortunate that they're just down seven points here to start this second half because they have not played well on either side of the ball. Quiet opening half for Marshawn Lynch. He only had two carries in the entire first half for a total of eight yards. Harris from the one yard line. And a good return up to the 27. Let's check in downstairs with Carissa Thompson. Well, Jason Garrett, a happy man running into the locker room, of course, that second quarter. I asked him how he was able to get so much stuff underneath. He said Seattle continues to play that single high safety over the top, so those checkdowns were wide open. The score for him, though, is 0-0. On the other side, Pete Carroll, I asked about his team's energy. He said it's hard to have energy if we're not on the field, of course, not even picking up a first down in the second quarter. Good news for them, though, you guys, they get Bobby Wagner back. That's real good news.
First down, Murray. And that'll be a gain of seven to begin the second half. Well, we've seen repeatedly now the Cowboys, when they run the ball and try to get outside, they do a good job here. As you see, Ron Larry, the left guard, Zach Martin, they come out, and then there's nobody there on the edge, and it creates a nice running lane for DeMarco Murray. A lot of success, again, running the ball on first down. Again, and very close to a first down. Again, we get back to the only team that's able to beat the Seahawks so far this year. And that was San Diego when they held the ball for 42 minutes, and Dallas is on that kind of pace right now. Well, yeah, Dallas was outstanding converting on third down. As you see, nine opportunities, seven times they converted. They weren't all third and short like they're facing here. Some of those were third and long, and yet they still picked them up. Especially that big third and 14. On the go-ahead touchdown drive. Third and inches, and they'll move the chains again, giving it to Murray. Well, this is a big possession for this Seattle defense. The, the way that they were dominated there in the first half, down by seven, Dallas opens up the second half here with the ball. They can't they need to make a statement and make a stop and get off the field and give the ball back to their offense. safety spot is Chancellor to drop him behind the line of scrimmage. We told you Seattle, the number one rush defense in the NFL, allowing 62 yards on average per game. And the Cowboys already up over 100. like Sherman tried to pull him from behind. There was definitely a grab at this one. The, the previous penalty. 25 defense. First down, spot of the foul. The previous penalty on Richard Sherman didn't think there was a call, but this one had his hands on his back. Looked like there was even a pull of the jersey as Des Bryant was trying to work back to the football. That's a good matchup between those two guys. A 13-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Murray on the sweep. Runs into Bobby Wagner. Well, you just look at what Dallas is doing. That time you got Dwayne Harris, wide receiver. He's out there making key blocks. And so the toughness of this football team certainly increased. When you start running the football and you're physical in your play, that permeates within the entire team. It's been interesting to see them dominate this game the way they have. Ooh, spot on there. Play action, Romo in trouble. And all the way back to the 45-yard line. That's the first major negative play on offense in this game for Dallas. Yeah, we've seen Romo at times have to move around within the pocket, so he does on this play. This one, he just kind of loses his footing more than anything when he's trying to cut back into the pocket to try to make a play. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see if Seattle can make a stop here on third and 17. Well, remember, they couldn't stop him third and 14 on that drive just prior to the first half. Murray on the screen. Boy, he got dangerously close for Seahawks fans for that first down coming up. It appears three yards short. 
Hey, the guy who's playing a nice game today is is Ronald Leary, their left guard. A number of times we've seen him out leading the ball carrier in the run game. This time he leads the way within the screen game. He's done a heck of a job. He's sandwiched between those two first round picks, Tyron Smith and Travis Frederick, and did a nice job last week as well against J.J. Watt at times. But Seattle at least forces a punt. Last time Dallas punted, it was blocked. Now Jones, very short. And a fair catch at the 10. Dallas leads by seven. Russell Wilson gets the ball for the first time in his second stanza. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. By Nissan, innovation that excites. By Corona, who invites you to find your beach. And by Burger King. For a limited time, get 10 chicken nuggets for just $1.49. Day after tomorrow, the MP Museum here in Seattle will open the We Are 12, the Seahawks and the Road to Victory. We're very excited about that here in Seattle. And they're hoping this offense can get something, anything going to begin this third quarter. I mean, the two big weapons, along with the quarterback Wilson, of course, are Marshawn Lynch and Percy Harvin. Very quiet. Six total yards. Let's go. Let's go. Back to back carries for Lynch and a first down and more. All the way to the 45 yard line. Well, they finally get an opening for Marshawn Lynch. He does a heck of a job. One, breaking the tackle, and then he's one on one on the safety. And that's some of the elusiveness that I talked about. J.J. Wilcox with a chance to try to make a tackle. He makes him miss. Gets more out of that run, but finally a break up front for that offensive line. Their first first down since there was 12 minutes left in the first quarter. Turbin in for Lynch carries up to midfield. Well, last week when Dallas had Houston down and they needed to get back into that ball game, they started handing it off to Arian Foster and. He ended up with a heck of a day, had over 150 yards rushing, and they hadn't been able to get anything going, but if Seattle is able to convert on some of these third downs and wear the defense down with Marshawn Lynch, some things will start to break, and that's been an area defensively where the Cowboys have been vulnerable this year. Well, it's Harvin in the backfield next to Wilson. Spins out of a tackle. But able to stay with it and drag him down was Tyrone Crawford. It has really been a very quiet year for Harvin. We mentioned last week he scored three touchdowns, all of them called back on penalties. But Harvin coming into this game only had 133 receiving yards so far this season. The only big play he's had was that 52-yard run against San Diego when it should have been overturned when he stepped out of bounds. So the Seahawks will punt it away. Well, Henry Melton is able to get a hand on it. The Cowboys, what they like to do, Rod Marinelli, they'll show pressure. Sometimes they drop out. This time they show up, but they bring it off the edge, and then they drop off with the zone blitz the opposite way. And he's not the one who gets a hand on it. Henry Melton comes right up the middle. He's able to deflect that pass. And another great job on third down by Dallas getting off the field. So good, pinning teams inside the 20. And the ball is loose after the fair catch was called for by Harris. It looked like Harris may have gotten back on it, but at the bottom of this pile, a lot of things are taking place, and it's just who comes out with it. 
Yeah. Pierre Lewis, he has it right there in his hand, right here. And it is Seattle football. Second big special teams play, and both of them have been turned in by the Seahawks. How about that? Dwayne Harris is going to just fair catch the punt, unable to secure it, and an offense for Seattle that just really has not been able to do anything is set up with great field position. Kevin Pierre Lewis recovered the fumble. Well, the officials, they were looking around there in the pile to see where the ball was. <laughs> Pierre Lewis saying, hey, I got it. <laughs> so now a break for the Seahawks. Can they take advantage? Carbon inside the 10, down to the 9-yard line. We were talking about Harvin a little bit earlier. He, he he attracts a lot of attention. You know, they put him in the backfield. They try to come up with some creative ways to get him the ball. He's an explosive guy, but they've got a lot of guys that can really run and get down the field. But, you know, none of them have really caught a lot of passes or at least a lot of yards with the passes they've caught. Wilson. Wilson's going to be reading Jeremy Mincy, the end of the line guy, and then Luke Wilson is going to provide the key block. As soon as he collapses, that tells Wilson he can keep the ball, and then it's just a matter of whether or not he can get on the edge. But Luke Wilson on a good block on Justin Durant. That's a great job by Seattle with, with excellent field position, being able to capitalize to tie this game up. You talk about offense, you talk about defense frequently, you overlook special teams. And right now, special teams, the only reason Seattle's in this game. After the muff punt, Wilson making a play. We're knotted at 17. Russell Wilson finding the end zone. For the second time, second straight week, in fact. Seahawks have blocked a punt. They went for a touchdown. And then a bump punt. On the return by Harris, leading to a second score. Harris with a hand on the football, and he's tackled at the 18-yard line. Wilson and the Seahawks needing something to get excited about. It looked like they were... Having that drive come to an end, but took advantage of the Harris Muck. Today's game is sponsored by Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. Crowd back in it. We're tied at 17, 613 to play in the third quarter. Cowboys with a first down. They hand it off to DeMarco Murray. He's dropped for a two-yard loss by KJ Wright. You know, Seattle really doesn't change what they're doing defensively regardless of who's on the field or not on the field and of course Byron Maxwell went down but they're still asking these corners to play one on one on the outside now Richard Sherman we have seen him flop sides but he has not always gone with Des Bryant however he did on the, on the first down play and he's on him once again here on second down we'll see if he continues to shadow Bryant. Blitz coming. Murray. Wrapped up by Sherman. It's up to the 22-yard line. It'll bring up third down and five for the Cowboys. That's a great job by Richard Sherman as a cover corner to come up and make a play. And he absorbed a big part of that blow. But as one of the elite corners in this league that covers people to come up and take him on like he just did, that's impressive.
Oh, the snap is mishandled, and it looks like Hill is at the bottom of the pile with the ball, but we wait. Shoving to the right. Possession to the left. Well, Tony Romo was trying to signal out to the receivers, wanting to change the route. And Travis Frederick snapped the ball, and he wasn't ready. And it was Hill who comes away with the football. You know, you see, I talked earlier that there were going to be a variety of silent snaps, now or silent counts. Now, earlier... It looks like some put some punching going on at the bottom of that file. Well, looks Tony like Romo, Bennett. he gives Frederick the foot. I think Travis Frederick thought that meant then that he was ready to have the ball snapped. Romo then tries to signal out to the receivers to change the to change the route they were on. And just a miscommunication of what they were doing. Recovery by Seattle. First down. Another costly mistake by this Cowboys team. You take a look at what happened here, Tom. And he gave the foot there. And then Frederick put his head back down. And as he's trying to signal out to the receivers, the ball snapped. Harris can't handle the punt after the Cowboys defense had stopped the Seahawks on their first possession of this second half. It led to a touchdown, and now this. Now you see him raise his foot there, and, and that's where the confusion came in with Travis Frederick and Jordan Hill and Tony Romo fighting for the ball. That's Romo's going to have a hard time getting it away from him. So when you're on the road, walk us through. We see it every quarterback in the league pick their foot up. When you do it the first time, it's saying to your center what? Well, sometimes it means, hey, I'm ready for the ball. They'll count. They'll snap it maybe on the, on the second. You know, they'll go 1,001, 1,002, snap the ball. Sometimes they give a foot. It's a dummy signal. They come back. They're going to lift the leg twice. That's why they change it up so that the defense doesn't get a beat on always knowing when the ball is going to be snapped. That was just a miscommunication between quarterback and center. Wilson nearly intercepted by Wilbur. Wilson's only thrown one interception all year long, and lucky that wasn't number two. And Kyle Wilbur was in a great position to make a play on this ball. Anthony Spencer applies the pressure. Wilson trying to get the ball out to avoid the sack. Almost costly because there was nobody in front of Kyle Wilbur. This will be big if Dallas is able to stop Seattle here to just three points. And another penalty against the Seattle offensive lineman. All star number 76 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Okun had three of the seven penalties against the Seattle offensive line Monday night in D.C. Still well, trying to come all the way back from surgery on his toe. Yeah, he is not back 100%, but whether he's physically at full strength or not, those pre-snap penalties are unacceptable. Third and eight becomes third and 13. And that is Ricardo Lockett to the 15-yard line, but that's short of the first down. And... Out comes Steven Hauschka for a field goal try to snap this 17 all tie. And Jason Garrett very excited about his defensive stand there. Absolutely. I mean, it's the best that Dallas could have hoped for. Given the ball to Seattle where they did to come out of this possession, just giving up three points. That's an outstanding job by this defense. 33 yard field goal try. This communication between quarterback and center leads to a Dallas turnover. And the Seahawks have the lead.
20 to 17 with 320 to play here in the third quarter. Seattle taking advantage on special teams and, and then a rare Dallas turnover. Rare since the season opener. You were there for that one, Troy Aikman, when Cowboys turned it over four times. Falling behind early and losing to the 49ers, their only loss of the year. And Harris unable for a second straight time to get it to the 20. We'll see if Dallas can regroup on offense. If you're not watching Sleepy Hollow, you're missing the most action-packed, outlandish, pulse-pounding thrill ride on network TV. Get out of my car. All new Sleepy Hollow, tomorrow at 9, 8 central on Fox. 25 years ago today, the Herschel Walker trade, engineered by Jimmy Johnson. Largest player trade in the history of the league. 18 players in draft picks. Herschel Walker to Minnesota. Evan Smith, Alvin Harper, Russell Maryland, all part of the draft picks that came the other way. That was the first season of ownership by Jerry Jones. He had fired legendary Tom Landry. The team had started the year 0-5. Here's first down, looking for Terrence Williams. And he's got it all the way to the 35-yard line. And he beat Marcus Burley. So the first big long pass completion and now a flag comes in late after after the catch lay a game number 83 of the offense five yard penalty first from 10. they just kind of wondered when you looked at this as to when they were going to take a shot against Marcus Burley we've seen Richard Sherman now in this second half go with Des Bryant and so Marcus Burley is on Terrence Williams and he's a guy that has some speed he has big play capability a nice job there on a big game I'm not so sure I like the call it didn't seem like much of a spike to me or a delay of game but that's what the, the call was all right so it's spotted in the 39 a first down Cowboys trailing by three All right, Troy, I want to go back. You had just been drafted. You guys won, what, one game that first year. And all of a sudden, you make that deal. Take us back to what it was like in the locker room. You had played five games already that season. Well, Herschel was the only legitimate player we had on our team. That's why we were able to trade him and get what we got for him. I know Jerry and Jimmy have been arguing for the last 25 years as to whose idea that was to make the trade. Heck, I'll take credit for it if that's what it takes. But... There's no question that that trade allowed us to go on and do what we were able to do in such a short period of time. Winning three Super Bowls with so many of the poor players coming out of that deal. They lay it off to Tyler Klutz. That's the first time he's touched the football as a receiver this year. And look who dropped into coverage. That's Michael Bennett. He's a terrific player. He lines up all across the board and is just an outstanding football player for this team. So now big third down for the Cowboys, who had a 17 to 10 lead, and that has vanished. Incomplete with an eye on Beasley. Well, this time they're able to get the inside pressure on Romo. Right over Ron Leary is where they come. And they're able to get into the face of Romo so he can't step into that throw and deliver an accurate ball. Beasley trying to work the middle. This is going to be a long field goal try, but if there's a guy that has a leg to do it, it is Dan Bailey. Well, they're setting Seattle up with great field position. If he misses, one of the reasons they're going for it is their defense been so good. Well, look at this guy. He is something. He is something. 56 yards. 
He had hit 30 a row until the end of regulation, wound up winning it last week, and ties it here in the third quarter today. Career long 56 yarder from Dan Bailey, who today has become the most accurate kicker in the history of the NFL. He needed one more field goal try to qualify, and he's perfect today. What a great weapon when you got a guy that you have that kind of confidence to be able to make field goals from 50 plus yards. There's a lot of pressure off an offense. Percy Harvin's going to bring it out. Upended at the 15-yard line by Tyler Patman. We're tied at 20 in the third. Annual screening saves lives. Help finish the fight against breast cancer by visiting NFL.com slash pink to celebrate the NFL and American Cancer Society's first ever a crucial catch day on October the 25th. We are tied for the third time today. On first down, Lynch stood up by Rolando McLean. That's the first time we've called his name today. What a story he has been for the Cowboys. Former number one pick by the Oakland Raiders, spent three years there, was cut by Oakland, signed by Baltimore, decided to retire. Cowboys took a flyer, made a trade to get him. He's had a number of off-the-field incidents, which led to some trouble for him, but appears to have everything in order now and playing solid football for the Cowboys. He has played well, Tom, and they've needed him. You know, there was a huge void defensively when Sean Lee went down. He's filled in beautifully. Fake it one way, come back the other way. And that did not fool Dallas J.J. Wilcox. With 11 seconds now remaining here in the third quarter and a third down for Seattle. How about when we talked to Rod Marinelli yesterday and he talked about J.J. Wilcox and the development of him from last year as a rookie to this season. He is a physical, physical player. That'll be the final play of the quarter. We're tied at 20. Fox NFL Sunday returns after these messages. And a word from your local Fox station. Kills you has a beginning. You believe Gotham can be saved? Gotham, followed by Sleepy Hollow, all new tomorrow on Fox. Where do you want? Hard to believe when you look at those set of numbers, Troy Aikman, that this is a tie game. Well, the difference has been special teams, you know, for Seattle to be able to stay in it. The Cowboys have got to feel good. They wanted to go into the fourth quarter with a chance to win. They're starting the fourth. Tied up 20 all. Third down and eight. Seattle just two of seven on third down. Oh, for their last five. And they convert here. Finding Baldwin, who had the block punt, which led directly to a touchdown back in the opening quarter. Well, Jermaine Curse had a 53-yard reception there in the first half. Other than that completion, their longest pass play prior to this completion here to Baldwin was just eight yards. So they've not been able to really drive the ball down the field, but that was a big-time conversion to keep this drive alive. Delighted to have you with us on this late Sunday afternoon for many back in the East and Central time zones. And looking for the big home run ball here, and incomplete. Looking for a penalty flag, but not one throw. And again, they were looking for Kurz, and that's Sterling Moore, who continues to get more and more valuable playing time for Dallas. Well, they had a chance, and you see he goes up, but a good play. There at the end of that, knocking it loose by Sterling Moore, and Sterling Moore getting his opportunity to play more and more because of the injury to Moe Claiborne. And he started off playing a lot early in the season with the suspension of Orlando Skandrick. I know they like him, and he has stepped in and been a nice addition to this defense. Wilson able to get it away. Somehow, someway finds a way to avoid the sack. 
We talked about how Dallas defensively has been able to keep from giving up big plays in this game. And even with Russell Wilson buying time in the pocket and keeping the play alive, it just really has not been anywhere for him to go with the football throughout this game. And the Seahawks have basically abandoned the run game here in the second half. Now they started the half behind by seven. But after getting the third down and long, they've thrown it on first and second down, and now third and ten. And they'll use a timeout. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. By Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. And by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Welcome back to Seattle, a 2020 affair. With nearly an entire fourth quarter remaining, it's third and ten for the Seahawks from their own 30-yard line. Blitz coming. And Wilson rolls out of it, throws down the field, and they, did they get the catch? It is a catch for a first down. There is a penalty flag right at the 40-yard line. Prior to the pass, holding number 92 defense, penalty decline, first down. Well, this Russell Wilson is just so smooth. Here's a catch at the end of that play. Baldwin, he's able to secure it. But as you talked about, Russell Wilson, they bring the blitz off the edge. They're unable to get to Russell Wilson. He keeps the play alive, scrambles out. One of the things I've been impressed with watching Russell Wilson this year, he throws the ball with tremendous accuracy, rolling out to his left. For three. You know, this Cowboys defense, run defense, through the first five weeks was giving up a lot of yards, as I said. And teams were running the ball on an average of over five yards a carry, second worst in the National Football League. But you take out Marshawn Lynch's run in this second half of 32 yards. They really just have not been able to get much on the, on the ground against this group. There you see, five, three, four, two, one, two, outside of that big one. version of the option they just flip it to Brian Walters and another third down and long coming up we check in with Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles Raider rookie quarterback Derek Carr had four touchdown passes on the season coming into the game against San Diego he's got that many today two to Andre Holmes and the Raiders trying to pull an upset 28 24 looking for that first win of the season Tom Troy and Carissa all right Kurt thank you very much here we go again Look at Seattle's average distance on third down. Yeah, it's hard to convert when you're looking at third and long all day. Drop back into coverage this time. Incomplete. Scandrick in coverage with Brian Walters. Seattle will punt. Well, Orlando Scandrick there in the slot. And just good tight coverage really everywhere across the field every defensive player was on their man just like Skandrick was on that play. Now Dwayne Harris who had the muffed punt which led to the touchdown in the third quarter. Fair catch called for handled cleanly this time at the 11. Orlando Skandrick delivers the goods on a third down stop and the Cowboys have the ball. Twelve thirteen to play from Seattle a 2020 game the Cowboys and the Seahawks. And on first down from the 11 DeMarco Murray up to the 14. Not a bad day for three Super Bowl winning quarterbacks early games. Joe Flacco in a blowout of Tampa Bay. Tom Brady back-to-back -back outstanding games. And how about Aaron Rodgers? You had your eye on that one. 
That was an impressive drive to go down the field. No timeouts. Hits Andrew Corliss and, and wins the game. And there's a reason why those players make the kind of money they do to deliver in the clutch. And Aaron Rodgers does it time after time. They put everybody in Green Bay to relax a little bit. <laughs> I had to tell you that before the game today. <laughs> a flag holding number 65 offense after this is the goal repeat second down Romo took a big hit the holding against Ronald Leary the left guard negates the first down now they get him for the hole at the end of that play Romo gets pushed Cliff Averill but Ron Leary right here at left guard one that they called and right at the end of that play you see that he got McBain and eliminated a pretty nice play there to start this drive and Richard Sherman again on Des Bryant and that's where they're looking Two got tangled up at the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and 16. Well, this will be interesting now. Of course, third and 16. Not a real favorable position for the Dallas Cowboys to convert third and long, but Seattle has been much better on this down in the second half. They could not get off the field in the first half. Here in the second half, Seattle one of four, or excuse me, the Cowboys one of four on third down. Bridget Sherman and after the big penalty the Cowboys are forced to punt yeah, so the big penalty there on Ronald Leary when it looked like they were going to be able to get something going offensively on the completion to Dwayne Harris and Seattle able to force a punt they should get outstanding field position to start this next drive Brian Walter stands back in midfield as Jones punts out of the end zone. Very short punt. Great field position indeed. At the Dallas 42. Well, tonight it'll be game two of the National League Championship Series. The San Francisco Giants, winners of two of the last four World Series. Trying to go up two games to none over the Cardinals from Bush Stadium. That's right after football, only on Fox Sports 1. Giants, seven straight postseason road wins. Of course, the Giants and Cardinals getting together frequently in the postseason. Wilson and Doug Baldwin apparently having... I don't know if it's having words or not, but that's a one-way conversation. <laughs> well, Baldwin's a great competitor, and he's frustrated just like all these offensive players are, the way that they've not been able to move the football. Wilson tiptoes out of the sack. And the ball is incomplete. Nearly able to pull it in is Luke Wilson. Well, Luke Wilson's getting his opportunity because of Zach Miller being down, but you see Kyle Wilbur, he's running pretty good. Luke Wilson is a guy that runs 4-5. I mean, he can move down the field. Kyle Wilbur, a ball that's just a little bit underthrown. Kyle Wilbur able to make up the difference. You can read Pete Carroll's lips. He says that's so bad. He thought that should have been a penalty called on Wilbur. Looked like he made contact with Wilson's face mask just as the ball was about to arrive. Lynch. Grinding out yardage to the 37. Oh, you take a look at the end of that play, and it looked like there might have been hands to the face mask. I don't know that anything should have been called on the play, though. So a third down. 
Hauschka does not have the big leg like Bailey. And Lynch, very close to a first down, needed to get to the 32. Well, it would have been interesting to see what Pete Carroll elected to do if they had not gotten much out of that play. But they're able to keep the drive alive. They convert there on third down. Excellent field position. It would have been a real disappointment if they were unable to capitalize considering where they got the ball to start this possession. And that was only a 35-yard putt by Jones. Hey, just slip it, slip right. it. Move it. Toe, toe, toe. One, 90. Just not much air today for Marshawn Lynch outside of that 32-yard run. Uh, this group has been tough, and you know Rod Marinelli coming into the season, everybody talked about this defense and how they were going to be a liability for this football team. And I do think the running game offensively has helped them. But this guy right here, Rod Marinelli, has done an unbelievable job of getting this group to come out and play hard and today they have won the line of scrimmage. Second down, Blitz coming. And Wilson just throws it away and is it intercepted? That is Justin Durant. And they're saying the ball hit the ground before he caught it very close well Russell Wilson's been running around all afternoon trying to find somebody to get the ball to let's take a look and see if it hits the ground yeah I didn't see anything hit there You see Curse in the slot. They're trying to run vertical. If he just runs away from Carr to the middle of the field, you got a chance with nobody there to make a play. But no matter what Seattle has tried to do to free up these receivers, Dallas has been plastered on them throughout this game. The season long for Hauschka's 43. This will be from 48 to give him a lead. And it is. Good. Plenty of leg there from Ashkin. Today's game is sponsored by the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here. Who can forget the divisional playoffs? Back in 2006, Tony Romo could not handle a snap. On a 19-year-old field goal try to tackle made by Jordan Babineau and the Cowboys lost by one and look to raise the flag for the 12th man today Jordan Babineau we'll do a little work on looks like the left leg of Tony Romo Harris will take a knee we have 8 16 left to play Seattle with a three-point advantage well here's the hit that Romo had on that last possession well, it doesn't look like much but I'll tell you when you've had back surgery and now him having had his second in a year those kinds of hits when you're not prepared for them of course that was the hit that he got injured on there in the first quarter they, they take a toll ton of pressure today. Nowhere near the amount of pressure that Wilson has been under by the Dallas defense. Murray able to dodge a tackle. And on a save throw, first down picks up five. 
Much has been made of Tony Romo and some of the interceptions many of us, many of you remember late in games. But the bottom line is, when you look up the numbers in the career of Romo, in the fourth quarter, he has thrown 70 touchdowns against 27 interceptions. Much here for DeMarco Murray, so here we go on a third down and five. We'll see what Dallas is able to do here on third down. I talked about it. They haven't been nearly as good here in the second half. Seattle has been able to force Dallas to punt. And you wonder, you know, just how many more opportunities is Dallas going to get if they don't keep the ball in this possession? by Sherman and Des Bryant goes up to get it and that's a first down. Yeah, Romo knows that these are the types of balls that Des Bryant wants to be able to make a play on. So tight coverage by Richard Sherman, but give him one up high where he can go up and make a play when Sherman's not prepared to make a play on the ball. That's a great job between Romo and Bryant converting that to keep this drive going. It's a gain of 17. Will be holding against Dallas. Number 72 offense. Ten yard penalty. First down. They had the big penalty on the last drive, you may remember. On the left guard, Leary. And now this one on the center out of Wisconsin, the number one pick, Travis Frederick. Yeah, and Travis Frederick cannot be too happy about this. He's right in the middle of the screen and he's holding Brandon Mebain. But Mebane was not even going to be able to get there to make a play on that ball. So really had no bearing on the outcome of the play. But it, it cost Dallas dearly. Now faced with first and 20. Under six to go. field well, they're starting to get that inside pressure now on Tony Romo and that has always been the key in affecting a quarterback who's capable of picking you apart you got to get bodies in his face and the pocket has been getting pushed a little bit more here in this second half on Romo trying to find Bryant and it's incomplete and it brings up third down and 20. Well that's a throw you see so many times they, they are very effective throwing that down in the red zone for touchdowns and just unable to get on the same page as to where Des Bryant was coming out of that break. Very good third down numbers today for Romo. He needs to add to it right here and right now to keep this drive alive. We're under five minutes to go. Romo still on his feet. Lost it for Witten. Williams comes in behind him, and that is a catch. What a reception by Williams, who seemingly came out of nowhere. Let's first look at the end of this, see if he's able to get his feet in. He does. That's an outstanding job by Williams, keeping his feet in play. But how about Tony Romo keeping the play alive in the pocket? And a challenge comes from... Was it a challenge or a timeout? Yep, there's a challenge flag by Pete Carroll. Is it a catch? 
It looked good from that angle. This is a huge call when we come back. Now the verdict. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. Seattle will be charged with second timeout. That is a line judge, Mark Perlman, who made this call. That is quite a call in real speed. Well, that's a great job, and it's a, it's a great job by the line judge, Mark Perlman. It's a great job by Tony Romo. This is a defense that just simply does not give up 20-yard pass plays. They're looking at third and 20, and Romo keeps the play alive. Bruce Irvin is running around all over back there trying to corral him. And he throws one on the money, and Terrence William lays out beautifully and keeps his feet in bounds. That's a huge conversion to keep this drive, and they don't need much more. And then they're in Dan Bailey's range to tie this thing up. Of course, Cowboys have bigger hopes than that with 4.45 to go. Well, that's right, but it sure feels good. Yeah. If you're Tony Romo and you know that the first thing you want to do is get in field goal range. And then after that, you start worrying about trying to win this game with a touchdown. Only 18 rushing yards in this second half, but a big one by Murray. Inside the 20 and down to the 20-yard line for DeMarco Murray. They had the run game cranked up in the first half, and that's the first big run in the second. That's a good job by that right side of the offensive line. And you see the hole that's there. Tyler Klutz is leading the way at fullback, and shoot, he's four yards downfield before he even has to make contact with anybody, and then DeMarco Murray finishes it off. It looked like Hurley nearly lost that football. The 15 that'll be a gain of seven on first down and there's an injured cowboy that's a right tackle Doug free Jason Witten looked down, and as soon as he heard whatever Doug Free had to say to him, he immediately was signaling for the trainers to come out and check on him. Now you've got Jeremy Parnell coming in at right tackle. Free's been a good player for the Cowboys. Left tackle, right tackle. Second down, back to Murray. Cuts it to the inside, and Murray to the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas. How about that, Tom? They put Jeremy Parnell in there at right tackle, and they run right behind him, and he does a great job. You see him stand up, the outside defender, and then Zach Martin, right guard, opens up a lane for DeMarco Murray. That's pretty nice. That's great execution right there by that offensive line, and it just illustrates what they've been doing throughout this game. Point after now to make it 27 to 23. And for that carry, DeMarco Murray is continuing his assault on the NFL record books. He has joined Jim Brown as the only two back to the history of the league to start a season with six consecutive 100-yard rushing games. And who would have thought that today? You watch the job that those two guys do right there on this play. Travis Frederick has a tough block. He's got to reach his guy. He pushes him out of the way. DeMarco Murray finds a hole. This is a terrific runner, and now you put this offensive line in front of him, and this is a, this is a line, Tom, that is only going to get better. You know, Tyron Smith is locked up for the next 10 years. Travis Frederick, a second-year player, and then Zach Martin. 
the commitment that the Cowboys have made to this offensive line has been dramatic. It was just a couple years ago. They had a hard time protecting Tony Romo. Couldn't run the ball at all. And what they've been able to do, what they've been able to do this year has been something special. Murray on that drive that spanned 80 yards had four carries for 46 yards. On the heels of the Cowboys, only able to run it for 18 yards in this second half. Well, let's give credit to Tony Romo on third and 20. Just like last week when he's able to keep a play alive and deliver it to Des Bryant. There's not many quarterbacks in this league that can do what he did. And Harmon's going to bring it out deep in his own end zone. And that's a second straight return. Harmon has not been able to get back to the 20-yard line. A week six continues Sunday night football later tonight. That's a big one on NBC and the NFC East. Tune in tomorrow, Monday night football in the NFC West. It'll be the Niners and the Rams. That, that Eagles-Giants game all of a sudden, very important. Well, this NFC East is really shaping up to be a, a pretty tough division. Philadelphia with just one loss. As you said, the Giants, after two losses to start the year, they've won three in a row. We talked a lot about the Cowboys coming into this game, win or lose. We were going to find out a lot about them now. There's three minutes and 11 seconds left in this game, but the Cowboys have shown the league that they're for real. Set up. Crossing pattern to curse, and that is an excellent tackle again in the open field by Skandrick. And they are in hurry-up mode. They need a touchdown. And remember, when they challenged and lost the challenge, they lost their second timeout of this half. Well, they've got one timeout left, and this is the last possession they're going to get. First can't hang on. Third down and six. Yeah, they've just been unable to, to make any plays in the passing game. They've had a hard time running the ball. And with Dallas playing a lot of man coverage, Seattle has been unable to exploit the matchups no matter who it's been. Russell Wilson with 11 fourth quarter or overtime come from behind wins. Since he took over as a starter, that's time for most in the NFL. Incomplete. And now with 2.40 to go, and only one timeout left. Of course, you have the two-minute warning as well. It looks like Pete Carroll has already made his decision. He's going for it on fourth and six. Well, with one timeout, he has no decision. He, he gets the benefit of the two-minute warning, but you know, he's got to go for it here. This is the ball game. Russell Wilson had a chance if he puts his feet in the ground and delivers a strike. Instead, he was drifting and just not a good throw. They need to get to the 29. And they'll burn their final timeout. The previous play that I was talking about, as you're going to see Russell Wilson, there is a little bit of pressure, but he's got a crossing route versus man coverage, and he's got a chance. If he's able to put this one on him, they've got a chance in order to complete that pass and keep this drive going instead of facing a fourth down and just unable to make plays really throughout this game. Well, whether they win or lose, the turnaround in this Cowboy defense has been extraordinary. They were the worst, or among the worst, in all the NFL. They were the worst in Cowboys history last year. There's no debate about that. Well, don't tell them that, because with each week, they've gained confidence. You can only imagine how confident this team's going to be coming out of here today. As we still have this fourth down and six to keep their drive and hopes alive. Four-man rush. Wilson throws. And they turn it over on downs. Crowd wanted a flag. It doesn't come. And the Cowboys will take over with 235. This game's not over yet. They got the look that they took advantage of there in the first half. 
There you got Luke Wilson coming off the ball. Clearly could have been a call there on Barry Church. But Russell Wilson is trying to throw this ball out to the boundary. There was definite contact at the top of that route, but the official doesn't make the call. They're trying to get Skandrick out of there before he gets a taunting penalty. Murray will dive ahead, and that'll take us to the two-minute warning. The, a penalty flag down, I beg your pardon. That was in amongst that big crowd. Illegal use of the hands to the face. Number 99 defense. Five yard penalty added on to the end of the run. First down. It's Tony McDaniel. And he'll. Move it down to the. 18 yard line. Up to your screen right there, just knock Parnell's helmet off. Well, hey, Tom, we talked coming into this game that this was going to be a big test for this offensive line going up against the league's number one run defense. And the Cowboys in this game ran the ball about as well as they could have expected to run it. But this is a play, Troy, you referred to on that third and 20. Now that really was the play of the game. There were a number of things that happened throughout this game, but looking at third and 20 against this defense, <laughs> you know, the Legion of Boom. And granted, Byron Maxwell went out early in this game, and as we saw, Richard Sherman, he's been covering Des Bryant. But that was just a big time play by the quarterback and Terrence Williams. Two minutes away from a huge road win for the Dallas Cowboys. 27 23. Two minutes to go. Dallas with a football at the Seattle 16 yard line. The second down and eight. And the Seahawks are out of timeouts. Murray just trying to hold on to that football. Third down coming up. Now, if Seahawks can come up with a stop here and force a field goal, they'll have one more crack at it. Arizona in the NFC West with only one loss this year. Likewise for Seattle. 49ers will play tomorrow night. Under a minute 30. Any chance they throw it here, third and seven? I wouldn't think. They'll run this thing down just as far as they can. Of course, calling timeout here. Second timeout. Cowboys are going to call a timeout. You know, this is uh, Jason Garrett's fourth full year, Troy, as head coach, after taking over for Wade Phillips. They've had a chance the last couple of years to win their division, to get into the playoffs. They've been unable to do it. For a regular season win, is this as big, potentially, if they can hang on, <laughs> as any they've had so far with Garrett at the helm? Well, I think they came into this game with house money. You know, I mean, no one expected them to come in and be able to win this game. I think it was a game that really it was more of an evaluation as to where exactly they stacked up mm -hmm. against the defending world champs and one of the game's best. Instead, they come in here and they dominated this game. I mean, if you take the special teams play out of this, this game was not even close. This defense held Seattle to less than 200 yards of offense. I mean, it's it was a domination on both sides of the ball on the line of scrimmage. It is a great win for Jason Garrett and this Cowboys team. If they can get it. And Murray will be stopped at the 13-yard line. Seattle cannot stop the clock. And again, the only thing that it will stop it will be penalties. And that'll be against the Cowboys. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Starting to say they will decline the penalty. That's a big penalty right there. Otherwise, they could have burned it down to about 
about 38 seconds left in the game before they attempted a field goal. Yeah, and so now they will, you know, Seattle will get another opportunity. I say a great win. It's a great win if they're able to hang on to right. this thing. But, you know, Seattle is going to get another opportunity to see what they can do. seen this a couple of times today two guys going at it two great competitors well there's no doubt Richard Sherman he has not been shy about criticizing some of the game's elite receivers that wasn't the case this week though there was a mutual admiration party going on between those two 31 yard field goal try by Bailey And that gives the Cowboys a seven point lead with a minute and nine seconds left. So it looked like on that fourth down and six in completion that we would not see Russell Wilson take a snap in a meaningful situation again today. Not so fast. Well, as you said, I mean, a big time penalty. Certainly kept from taking more time off this clock and no timeouts, but with a minute and nine seconds. You know, they haven't been able to get the ball down the field throughout this game, but things change when you get to this situation of a ball game for a defense. I mean, one big play all of a sudden gives Seattle an opportunity to start trying to get the ball into the end zone with opportunities to win. And of course you start with the most dangerous kickoff return man in the league not historically that is Devin Hester but currently in Percy Harvin he's run back five in his career for touchdowns. I'd be real nervous about giving him a chance. Joseph Randall. That's a third kick in a row. Very close to a face mask penalty there. That's a third kickoff return in a row where Harvin has not reached a 20 yard line. lead over Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Seattle out of timeouts. Completion up to the 24-yard line to Wilson, but that clock continues to run under a minute. Well, remember, Dallas wanting not to give up the big play. They'll play zone coverage, and that's not what they're best at doing. Been playing man throughout this game. Wilson looking down the field, and it is intercepted. Just one time in their last 20 games, and they have shocked the Super Bowl champions today. That's well, probably fitting that Rolando McClain is the one that makes the play that ends this game. They're playing zone coverage, and Rolando McClain is looking back at Russell Wilson as he's carrying Luke Wilson down the middle of the field. A lot of times, a linebacker has his back to the quarterback, you can fit one in. But McLean knew what was coming. Russell just trying to get the ball down the field, and he comes up with another big play, and he's been making plays throughout this season. This will be the first win for Dallas here in Seattle since 2004. And barring a bad exchange on this snap, the Cowboys, for the first time since 2007, will begin a year at 5-1. Talking about a defense that gave up 27 points a game last year. They allowed four different quarterbacks to throw over 400 yards in a game. 
And here today, you pointed out, Troy Aikman, they dominated this football game. Yeah, they, this game was not as close as the score would appear. Dallas just played beautifully offensively and defensively, controlled the line of scrimmage. It's a great win for this franchise. That's going to be a fun plane ride back to Dallas for the Cowboys. DeMarco Murray over 100 yards. Tony Romo will celebrate with a win in Seattle.